bought this and it said in the description that it doesn't turn on. Well, no shit, Sherlock. I'm not surprised it doesn't turn on. I've got a feeling it's probably just going to be the power supply, to be honest. But, yeah, I don't know. Um, I have tried it when, I, when it got delivered. Um, so I bought a couple of PS5 disc editions recently. In fact, three. I've bought one off eBay, which is this one. I think I paid £220 for this. And then I bought another one for, I can't even remember, like £200, I think. Let's go through my purchase history. Sorry, I paid £220 for the one that hasn't arrived yet. I paid £180 for this one. This one here says PS5 disc edition spares or repairs. Parts that, parts that are not working. I don't know much of the history of this PS5 as I got it from a friend who said it wasn't working. There are broken chip pieces of the casing and many scratches shown in the pictures. I assume this might have been dropped. Uh, yeah. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. Whether you've got a simple project that requires a quick mod board or you want to launch your own products to the world, PCBWay can help. With fantastic pricing on multi-layer PCBs, flex PCBs, 3D printing and even laser cutting solutions, you're sure to get everything you need all in one place. Custom PCBs start from just $5 for a 1-2 to two layer board with a fast 24 hour build time and free shipping on orders over $30. PCBWay are also proud to announce their new aluminium PCBs which start at just $120 per square metre. Check out what PCB we have to offer by clicking on the link in the video description or the top pinned comment and get your project started today. Thanks again to PCB Way for sponsoring the video. Let's get back to the repair. So I have tried this, it doesn't turn on at all. But I do have a feeling that it's going to be just the power supply, to be honest. So it might be boring, but you know what? It should be fun. So if I get this working, this is going in my new workshop for myself. Because I haven't got a PS4, believe it or not. But the question we need to ask everyone is, have I got a free SSD? Because he was given it by a friend, apparently. So, is there a free SSD inside? Ready? Dun, 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 dun. Oh! Wounded. What about a free game? No. Ah, oh. You suck. Not now, not ever. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> anyway, never mind. Uh, so I'm going to get this apart. Like I said, it's probably going to be boring. It's probably just going to be a power supply. But you know what? If it is a power supply, I'll try and fix it. Because why not? Right, so I'm going to get the board ready to come out because I'm going to need to inspect it for any kind of bends or cracks or anything like that. But I am just going to test and see if we get 12 volts at all. But we've probably got spilt liquid metal as well, to be honest. But let's just test for 12 volts and see if we get that. If we don't get that, then we've got to look into the power supply. So let's have a look, shall we? Right, so... Do we get 12 volts? We do not. Okay, so we get absolutely nothing in terms of... Well, we get 0 0.33 volts on the power supply, which is why it's not turning on. So, chances are we've got a faulty power supply, which is what I kind of suspected when I even considered buying this. But I'm going to take it all apart anyway, because I need to check the board over as well. And, yeah, a little bit of a splatter on the liquid metal. Nothing major. The one thing I'm more interested in is, number one, do we have any cracks on the board? And number two, do we have any chips on the APU itself, as in, in the corners? Because that's what tends to happen when these get dropped. They're really not very well protected. I don't think we do. I will just inspect it under the microscope. I've got bits of plastic falling out of the case as well. Okay, so I'm not seeing any cracks in that corner. Same as that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Please tell me that's just liquid metal. If that's not just liquid metal, we have a total loss. 
Phew. Yeah, we're absolutely fine. So if that was a crack in the IPU, then it's total loss. As in, you know, I can't even recover money from the parts because the power supply looks like it's dead. But that's one of the risks you have to take with these. And this hadn't been opened as well, so I wouldn't have been able to blame the seller for that. It's just a risk you take when you buy faulty. You know, sometimes we can fix them, sometimes we can't. It's just the way it is. I'm just going to try and get all of this liquid metal back. From underneath the foam, I think I'm gonna to have to take the sticker off, uh, the foam off. I've got a feeling it's probably pushed underneath. Looks all that liquid metal that soaks into the foam. At least the foam has done its job this time and actually protected that because you know for a fact that would have just splattered everywhere if it didn't have foam there. But well, this time it looks like the seal has done its job at least in terms of stopping it going on the board whether it's gone underneath it is a different question so i'd be able to allow the liquid metal to group up keep it all in one place and move with the swab um you know what I'm not going to remove this foam. I'm going to leave it as is. I don't think it's gone underneath. And if it doesn't work, if I can't get it working, if we get a two second, beep on, uh, two second blue light of death or anything like that, then I'll look into it further. But for now, I'm going to leave it as it's meant to be with the foam in place. Just want to clean up this oxidation. Should be good with that. Let's see if I get a boot sequence then using the bench power supply. So what I mean by that is when I apply 12 volts to this, I expect to get a initial power sequence of 300 milliamps and then I expect it to drop back down to around about 7 milliamps and settle there. And that should indicate that we've got the power rails that we need. We get 299, back down and 9 milliamps. That seems absolutely fine to me. So I'm guessing this is just the power supply then. Chances are the power supply has been completely and utterly destroyed. So I'm going to pop the board to one side while I take this apart. And look at that. That is what we call in the industry fucked. That is the proper technical term for it. I'll salvage that. That banana grill. That's all I'm going to be able to salvage. Well, apart from the heatsink and the front panel. Not a lot that I can uh, save on this. <laughs> yeah, that frame is just absolute scrap. Complete and utter scrap, that frame. Let's get the front panel. Good stuff. I'll take that. And uh, I am also going to salvage this serial number, just so it matches. So, yeah, I've got a feeling that this is just completely destroyed inside. Probably not going to be able to fix it at all, but you know what? I'll give it a go. I will say, don't try and uh, work on PS5s if you don't know what you're doing. They are dangerous. Not, not a lot of dust in that, actually. They are dangerous, and they can still carry voltage for a long time after you take them apart. So, oh, sorry, after you uh, remove power from it. And it's not like it's just 12 volts. These can hold up to 400, 450 volts. And that is enough to do some damage. I'm not a power supply technician. I'm not an engineer. I'm not qualified. Don't know what I'm doing with power supplies. So don't try this at home. I will say as well, though, if you're at all worried about getting a shock, just don't fucking open them. Like, seriously, just don't open them. If you're worried at all, 
but it gave me a shock. See, I know I haven't got any underlying heart conditions or anything, so I know that I'm fine. If I get a little bit of a zap, you know, it's going to hurt, yes, but, you know, that's all it's going to do to me. But, if you've got an underlying heart condition, it can cause serious issues. If you're wearing a pacemaker, you're in some serious trouble. This is very unlikely even receiving any voltage into the main board, so... Another thing as well, don't pry it open with a metal pry, pry tool like I am, because that is just stupid. Get out! Do it now! Right, what are we dealing with here? So the case is knackered, we can't reuse the case no matter what. But, let's just have a look at what we're actually dealing with, so... I'm seeing a bit of a damaged heat sink there. So that shouldn't be on an angle like that, so that's been crushed. What about my input fuse? Do we have continuity? We do. Zero ohms. Uh, we've got a coil there which is damaged. That looks like that's been ripped off the board. Let me just check the voltage in these caps. Let's just see what we've actually got. Yeah, it's completely dead. Uh, so we've got no voltage, no residual current in there at all. Just looking to see if I can see anything obvious. I'm not going to be spending too much time on this. I don't really like repairing power supplies, to be honest with you. But I will, I will give it a one over and at least give it a try. Like I said, we've got this this coil here which is damaged. Uh, actually, that's probably all that's wrong with this. That is probably all that's wrong with this. Let me show you what that is. Well, what we're dealing with. So I don't know much about power supplies, but that is going to cause a problem. Because it's completely come away from the board on one side. Um, don't think that's going to be salvageable. Not without breaking the plastic away. Because it looks like it's completely snapped the, the wires from around the coil. Yeah, you could probably repair that, but... It's not really worth it. So what I think I'll do is just desolder that. Isn't that a common mode choke? I don't know, to be honest. Like I said, I'm not a power supply technician, so I don't actually know. Um, but I'm assuming. So this is where this is where this coil is meant to be, or whatever the hell it is, and. I think we're meant to get continuity from here to here. Probably not going to be getting that. Yeah, absolutely nada. Absolutely nada. Nada. So, yeah. That is completely and utterly shot. Which is why we're going to get no power on this, because there's no continuity. Don't you have a pile of broken PSUs? I do indeed. Somewhere. Where is a different question? So, yeah, I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to desolder. Sorry, I've got the e cups. I'm going to desolder this from here. Um, I'll see if I can repair these, but whether I can or not, I don't know. I'll replace this with leaded solder. Right, so, yeah, you can see that one's completely broke. And that one. And these two are not. These two are actually still on there. So it's just broken on the one side by the look of it. Oh. I'm going to get some... Solder braid, I think. Right. 
there we go. So technically that's desold in there, even though I've only just I've only sucked the two soldage pads out. It should well it should come free, but apparently not. Um There we go. Gotcha. Yeah, so it's completely snapped on um, on two of those legs. I could probably break that away and uh, I break this plastic away and re-solder them in, but I don't know if it would make a difference to the length of it. But you can see where this has failed, it's just completely given way. But I don't think it's worth reusing that. You could probably buy one of them for probably what, about a pound to fix this. But I don't think it's worth risking replacing that, uh, repairing that, when you can just take one from a donor board and replace it. D and I'm willing to resold that. No, we're talking AC voltage here, guys. I can't take that risk um, but bear in mind this is on the input side of the power supply it's not like it's the low voltage side this is AC voltage you don't budge it ever I know some people would and they probably feel safe doing so but not me not me I'm not going to put my own life and I'm not going to put my kids lives in danger by bodging this and then using this power supply I'll take one from a donor board and replace it it's not worth risking life and limb for, not for the cost of them. And bear in mind, I've got power supplies laying around. Uh, I am going to have a quick look and see if I've got one in here before I go stripping down a, another power supply just for the sake of repairing this. Right. So there is a nice replacement component. Beautiful. Look at how gorgeous that looks. Let's desolder this one then, shall we? Come on. Don't care about popcorn in this board. Got him. By the way, I set my hot air really hot there. Didn't care about popcorn in the board, even though I knew it would happen. This this power supply is dead. In fact, that was another dropped PS5 power supply, and it knocked out one of these um, transformers. Took out one of the transformers, snapped it clean. So yeah, there we go. We've got a nice, nice looking uh, coil there. Now I've just got to desolder the rest of this. <laughs> I've just melted my Gootwick case as well. Damn it. I hate it when it doesn't clear the hole out properly. Now I've got to refill it with solder. Just to wick it away again.
There you go. I will repeat, I do not know what I'm doing with power supplies. Please do not copy what you see on this video. Only work on power supplies if you're confident or with the advice of someone who actually knows what they're doing. I am going to try and learn about power supplies if I can. I'll tell you one person who does know about power supplies. Steve B. Maybe one of the mods can post a link to his channel. I'm sure he would appreciate it. Just like I would appreciate if these legs get in there properly. Um, well, I mean, there's a leg stuck in there, so it's not going to work, is it? Get out. I like the cat paw look on these. It's pretty cool. Right. So with that in place, I just need to hold it there while I drop a little bit of solder on it. Uh, actually, let's try and press down on the legs just to hold it in place. There you go. That'll hold it. And now I can solder it properly. It shouldn't need flux for through hole components. There's flux inside the solder. As long as you heat up both the lead and the pad at the same time, you should get a nice solid joint. You see the flux coming out? Beautiful, beautiful, that'll do it. Through hole components are really simple, just heat up the lead and the pad at the same time and the solder will flow nicely onto both the pad and the lead. There we go, that should be good. One, replace coil. It's not completely straight, but you know what? Who cares? Who cares? Neither is this. Uh, hmm, should that be changed? Uh, it should be fine, I suppose. I might just use this as a test-only power supply if it works. I don't really trust it, but... Eh. But yeah, that should, theoretically, be good to go. So, I am going to put it back inside this housing. Right, now the question is, is it going to blow up in my face? I have got some replacement cases for these. But for now, I'm going to use this. Then again, to be fair, I mean, apart from that vent being crushed, do I really need to replace the case if I'm just going to use it as a test only? Well, I heard a sizzle. Voltage mode. 12 volt, baby! That power supply is working. 12 volts on that. Good. Good stuff. Right, I can reuse the heat sink because that's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with the heat sink. So I'll reuse that. So yeah, for the sake of just replacing that component, I'd just rather not bodge it. 
I know I don't know much about power supplies, but one thing I do know about is the danger of bodging AC electrics. If it was on the DC side, like I wouldn't be as bothered because the power supply is going to protect it from that. But if you have an issue with AC and you haven't got an RCD protecting the circuit, you're going to have some serious trouble. You're going to have some serious trouble. You bear, in, <clears throat> you bear in mind it can draw up to 20 amps on most circuits, if not more. Um, and that's at 240 volts, so yeah. Probably not a good idea to be bodging it. There we go. Uh, right, okay, I'm going to get a new housing, say new, it's not new, but I can certainly reuse it, so, uh, for, for the time being, I'm going to pop that in there, I'm not going to use this in the actual console, but I will use it as a test power supply, I'll actually mark it as test only power supply. So I did a PS5 the other day, I did a bent PS5 motherboard, and one thing I did was I marked it, do not resell, test board only, even though it's mainly straightened out, just by being inside the housing. But, yeah, test only, because I know that all of the voltage rails are going to be present on it. But I mark them to say, right, you cannot resell this at all, sort of thing. But it'll come in handy for, like, test voltage and shit like that. So I need a filter to prevent interferences. Going outside of the PSU back to the mains. Yes, I know, but it's still on the AC side, it's still on the hot side. It's not worth bodging. Like it's not worth just running jumpers to it or whatever. It's just not worth the risk, mate. So this is my front panel that came with this console. Just pop it back together for now, just for sake of testing this this uh, motherboard. And then if it works, I'll rebuild it into another case. Well, into a proper case with a proper power supply and stuff. We do have a little bit of bending on this board. Actually, this is the wrong housing. Yeah, this is an 1116 housing. They are different. So, it'll do for now. It's fine just to see if we get power on this. Let's just see if it turns on, shall we? Yeah, it does. See if we get a white light, and let's also test display. And this power supply will probably be absolutely fine, but you know, just given the fact that it's taken an impact, is it really worth using it? We have a display. So the HDMI test is telling me we've got display, we've got a white light. That is a fixed PlayStation. So I do just need to test the disk drive real quick and just make sure that works. But I've got a feeling it's going to need to be stripped down and have some replacement parts. I can hear something moving around inside it. So I've got a feeling I've got to strip this disk drive down. So I'm just going to give it a quick test. But I can test everything then as well. I can make sure that the fan's working and stuff as well. While I'm editing this video, I did realise that I did actually change the fan in this console, and I didn't realise at the time. The original fan was a Foxconn fan, and it had some damage to the blades, so without even realising, I automatically picked up a replacement NMB fan and put that inside it. So, yep, the fan's been changed as well, so that did cost me technically an extra £30. It recognises that the disk drive is present, so now I've got to get a test disk. Let's use that one, why not? Yeah. Yeah, it's fucked. Right. Yeah, mechanism's all gone. Yeah, one of them gears are knackered. Alright, well, there we go. 
let's shut it back down. Let's fix that disk drive if we can. There we go. Let's pop that to one side. Yeah, we've got bits falling out on this. There's one of them. There we go. Right, where did that piece break off from? So while I'm sat here editing away, I've realised I was making a complete and utter fool of myself on live stream. This is the first time I've ever taken a disk drive apart on the PlayStation 5, and I really didn't know how to put it back together. So I made a fool of myself for about 20 minutes before realising that the issue was caused by the mechanism plate not aligning properly with the gears. So enjoy this little time lapse and a little bit of music. HDMI port seems okay. Uh, it's a little bit damaged, but it's fine. It's it's still intact. As in, like the uh, the outer case is slightly damaged, but that's fine. Uh, front USB ports look okay, sort of. I think. I hope. I don't know. Uh, yeah, ports look okay. Right, that sounds like a very healthy disk drive to me. Yep, that sounds like a very healthy disk drive to me. It sounds like it's certainly loading anyway. Ugly cam. And then I'll plug in the HDMI. That is definitely loading. And that is definitely displaying. Good stuff. I'm actually not going to put this back together on stream, to be honest. It's one of mine, so it's boring. 
Right, do we sync a controller? Yes. Right, the user's name on this is K. I've fixed your console, K? K. Well, it was your console, now it's mine. Come on, let me log into an account. Ha! I'll just hack that dickhead. Ha! Well, it detects that disk. Oh, I should have known. In FIFA and GTA, piece of shit. And it's running 7.6. Got it. It's not the latest version, but it's uh, it's pretty close. Uh, let's just test Wi-Fi. Picks up my Wi-Fi. Hey, there we go. Right, that connects. Good. Right, let's test Ethernet. So this needs an absolute full test just to make sure that absolutely everything works. So let's connect to the ethernet. LAN cable connected. Wired LAN. Yep, there we go. So that's working. I'm gonna run an update on this, make sure that it's updating. Actually, let's just test the disk drive first. Yep. Uh, update later. Blah, blah, blah. Disk drive works. Loads of game, and yeah, there we go. Let's run the update, make sure that update, update's fine. Oh, you check your disk, guys, while it's updating. Oh, you'll break your console. No, you're wrong. You're all wrong. Oh, dear. Anyway, everyone's wrong except me. I'm going to go system, reset, reset console, and there we go. It takes update files from the disk. No, we don't. Oh, we don't. It's a read-only disc. How can you have update files for the disc? And don't lick the inside of a PSU, you'll get shocked. No, you won't. No, you won't. No. Lick the inside of the PSU, it's good for you. I'm telling you. Trust me. Don't trust you, mate. How can you take update files from a PS4 disc? I call bullshit, bitch. Winner. Winner, winner, winner. There we go. One working console. I still need to put it back together, but I'm not going to do that tonight because it's boring. So that's a win. £180 for PS5. And all it cost me was a disk drive plate, a bit of a clean, a mid frame. Actually, it cost me more than I thought. That mid frame is about £25, the disk drive plate is probably about £15, that's about £40, a pound for that part on the power supply, no that's not that bad, like £40, quid, £40 plus the 180 £220 an, an hour's work for the PS5 to work, I'll take that, I'll take that all day.